Hey, who wants to hear a joke? Dahl asked as he approached the enemy formation. Dahl, where are you? Said Johan. I have lost visual contact. Dahl continued. Why are French guns so expensive to buy? Because they're in mint condition. He chuckled at his own words. There was silence on the other end. Give me a minute. I'll think of a better one. Dahl, I still can't see you. Where are you? Asked Johan. I'm approaching the formation from my 11 o'clock, replied Dahl as the massive B-17 bombers heaved into view. Understood, replied Johan. Dahl exchanged fire with a B-17 as the formation streamed past. Ooh, I think I got him. I'm coming around, said Dahl. As he wheeled around, Dahl spotted a bomber, out of formation and at a lower altitude. I'm gonna go after him, said Dahl. The one down almost on the floor. I'm not sure which one you mean, said Johan. You're on your own. Sure thing, said Dahl. I got it. Dahl lined up the B-17 in his sights and fired a steady stream of bullets, hoping for a lucky hit. He wheeled around to follow his prey, who was conducting evasive maneuvers. His bullets began to find their mark and he could see a small fire on the wing of the bomber. But then suddenly, he was hit. Dahl listened as the engine sputtered and then fell silent. I've lost my engine, Dahl exclaimed, although his voice remained calm. What? Are you joking again? Replied Johan. Negative. My engine is dead. Where are you? Do you think you can land? Asked Johan. I guess I'll find out, replied Dahl. Other than the air rushing past, the world fell strangely silent. Luckily, the escorts had already turned around and Dahl glided down unmolested. I'm not far from the airfield. I just might be able to get there, Dahl said, squinting into the sun. The landscape moved past at a terrifying rate. Have you got enough speed? Asked Johan. Eh, you could say that, said Dahl. I'm going to pop the canopy in case there's an opportunity to bail, and I have to take it. You're too low to the ground. The parachute won't be able to do much, exclaimed Johan. You don't have to tell me what I already know, replied Dahl in a flat voice. Hey, said Dahl. I've got another one for you. What's that? asked Johan. A joke, said Dahl. What, now? asked Johan. A soldier was asked about the Great War by a child. Sir, how did you know the Great War was over? Well, he said, they stopped shooting at me. Pulling back on the stick at the last minute, Dahl brought his plane in and slid along until he came to a full stop. There was a strange sound that erupted as the plane skidded across the airfield, a sound that seemed so out of place and yet so appropriate. Dahl's face was contorted and he threw his head back. He was laughing. Staffel Kapitan Adamit stood on the airfield in the heat and sunshine as part of his staffel landed their planes one by one. He watched them with a keen eye. Then, sensing movement, he turned to see a strange-looking figure approaching him from an unexpected direction. 
Is that you, Doll? he said with a smirk. Yes, Captain. How did you know? Doll's voice was muffled by the mask he was wearing. I was hoping you thought I was Dr. Gogol. I didn't see that motion picture. Horror is not my favorite, Adamit explained. Where's your plane? I came down on the far end of the field. My engine was hit, maybe by the bomber I was chasing or maybe by anti-aircraft fire, Dahl mused. I had to glide in. The landing gear also malfunctioned on me. How bad is it? I think if any of our mechanics had some ambition, they could do wonders, Dahl commented. In fact, I would ask that you speak to them. I think I deserve some upgrades in return for all the selfless heroism I have shown thus far, Captain. Well, your plane was one of the last to be repainted properly, so it needed to go and see the mechanics anyway. With regard to upgrades, we'll start by fixing the landing gear and giving you a working engine and a new paint job, and we'll take things from there. Are you okay? Yes, Captain. I'll be ready to put myself in harm's way again after a bit of rest, Dahl quipped. Good to hear, Dahl. Go and rest. It's been a busy day so far, so get what you can. As Dahl left and made his way to the mess hall, Johan, who looked very young himself, approached with an even younger-looking man, dressed in a slightly crumpled uniform. Captain, I wish to introduce you to Airman Braun, Johan said with a movement of his arm. He is Bauer's, er, replacement. Johan was right to hesitate. Adamit flinched a little at the mention of Bauer's name. Braun saluted eagerly. I'm looking forward to engaging the enemy and sending them home, sir. Good to meet you, Braun. Adamit smiled knowingly. Bauer was a great pilot. You have a lot to live up to. I will give it my all, sir. I can't wait to show you what I can do, sir. Braun seemed like an eager puppy pulling at his leash. I'm sure you'll do well and you'll do your part. We all need to do our part if we're going to win this war, Adamit said. I plan on doing more than just my part, sir. I look forward to knocking some bombers out of the sky. There was a fire in his eyes that made Adamit take notice. Well, I look forward to seeing what you've got, Adamit said. Then he looked across the field and spotted Kremler. Pardon me, he said to excuse himself, and they saluted as he began to walk stiffly across the field. Permission to ask a question, sir, said Braun. Yes, said Johan. What is it? How is the captain allowed to have a beard? It's against regulations. I don't know the full story, but the captain is allowed, said Johan flatly. He must be the only man in the Luftwaffe, Braun said incredulously. Yes, very likely. I don't know of anyone else who is allowed to wear a beard, Johan agreed. Kremler smirked as he noticed Adamit approaching. Yes, Captain, he said with a lazy salute. Kremler, started Adamit. I've been meaning to ask you something. Anything, came the reply. I've noticed that the last few times we've been up, the escorts seem to distract you. Whatever do you mean, Captain? Kremler raised an eyebrow. I mean that we have some brave men that are charging into pretty heavy defensive fire from those B-17s, and it always seems that the escorts prevent you from joining them. Why is that? Couldn't tell you, said Kremler. His face and tone of voice was devoid of emotion. Those Spitfires are always circling around. You can't ignore them. I need to know you have our back, Kremler. Adamit's tone was suddenly deadly serious. Kremler stared back at Adamit, unblinking. Adamit met his gaze. And then, as if to intentionally break the steely silence, the familiar sound of the air raid siren began to blare, and the men rushed to their planes. All right, boys, Adamit said. We have a small formation approaching their likely target. No escorts in sight, so let's make this really count. Johan, you come with me and we'll distract them from the front. Dahl, Kremler, you guys get some altitude and come out of the sun. Pay attention to that anti-aircraft fire. Yes, sir, said Johan. Yes, sir, said Dahl. Anyone hear a good joke lately? Not now, Dahl. Stay focused, said Adamit. Kremler remained silent throughout. Adamit and Johan rose to the level of the approaching formation and began to close the distance at an incredible speed. Kremler and Dahl got themselves into position. The anti-aircraft guns seem sort of quiet, Johan noted. They should be firing much more right now. 
Just as he finished speaking, the easily recognizable black puffs of smoke began to appear in the air. Ah, exclaimed Johan. There they are. The BF-109s began their approach. Adamit and Johan focused on the lead plane while Dahl and Kremler took the closest plane to them, hoping that the sun's rays would mask their approach until it was too late. It wasn't long before the anti-aircraft fire hit their mark. Kremler noticed that their target bomber had taken some damage from shrapnel coming from a nearby exploding shell. They might have done some damage to the engine, Kremler thought out loud, but I don't think they did much. Suddenly, Dahl's plane shook with an impact. What happened? Kremler asked. Damn it, I've been hit. I think the anti-aircraft guns got me. But there wasn't time to think about it, as they were being met with a hail of defensive fire from their target B-17. On the other side of the formation, Adamit noticed that Johan was moving a bit erratically. At the end of this run, I want you to climb up and to the left. Johan, what's going on? Asked the captain. I'm just trying to dodge this enemy fire. It seems like they're onto me. Johan's plane weaved suddenly without warning, and it took all of Adamit's flying skill to avoid a mid-air collision. Johan, stay focused. Johan was silent, so Adamit turned his attention quickly back to the B-17 bomber looming in front of him. He squeezed off a few shots before veering off to the left, barely missing colliding with the enemy bomber. Johan was also firing a steady stream of bullets and managed to score a hit on the fuselage before getting hit with some enemy fire himself. Luckily, their positioning helped him avoid damage. Johan's frustration could be heard with a yell that went across the radio waves to his compatriots. Johan, are you okay? asked Adami. She seems to be holding together, was the reply. Follow me, ordered Adamit as he climbed up towards the bright sun. Johan complied. Meanwhile, the other two dove towards the enemy, guns blazing. It was almost as though they had been taken over by a wild desperation. Their fingers never left the triggers for what seemed like an eternity. As they rained a seemingly endless amount of bullets upon their target, Dahl registered some damage in the bomber's fuselage and Kremler on its massive wing. None of the wounds were mortal, however. They whizzed past, weaving through the defensive fire. Captain, I'm out of ammo, said Kremler. Already? What are you talking about? Adamit exclaimed, shocked. Dahl chimed in as well. I'm out too, Captain. You two must be joking, said Adamit. Maybe they didn't put in a full complement of ammo before we left, suggested Kremler unconvincingly. Adamit swore under his breath. He knew that that was very unlikely. What kind of game was Kremler playing at here? That's what he couldn't figure out. But his thoughts were interrupted when there was a loud series of bangs as bullets tore into the cockpit. He had been so distracted, he had forgotten to weave, which he began to do now. He checked himself. No blood that he could detect. He didn't feel like he had been struck. His plane had taken some damage, but it looked like he had been extremely lucky. Captain, everything okay? Asked Johan, who had made it through unscathed. Yes, I I'm fine. Let's start another pass before we run out of fuel. I'll wait for you so we can head in together. Adamit and Johan began their turn as Kremler circled out of range of the bomber's defensive machine guns. The bomber's formation still held as it trundled on towards the target nearby. Captain, said Kremler, without ammo, I'm useless to you up here. Permission to head back. Granted, said Adamit through gritted teeth. Get out of here. The anger and frustration mounted in him, but he pushed it down as he watched Kremler's plane turn for home. They had to focus on getting into position for the next pass, making sure the sun was directly behind them. What about you, Dahl? Captain, there's something wrong with my plane. That anti-aircraft fire hit my elevators, but something else must have been hit as well. It was then that Dahl noticed that his engine was stalling. Oh, not again, he said under his breath. What is it, Dahl? Questioned Adamit. My engine's dead, said Dahl in a flat voice. No joking this time. I'm gonna have to try and glide down somehow. 
Just get down safely, said Adamit. He shifted his focus to the task at hand now that Johan had rejoined him. He noticed that the bomber formation had been scattered a bit by their planes and the constant anti-aircraft fire. Okay, Johan, let's go. This is our last chance at it. They dove out of the sun into the loose formation, and they both noticed that the anti-aircraft fire had intensified. The lead bomber was struck in one of their engines, and the plane to the left of it was hit in the engine as well. Unfortunately, it never seemed to be enough. The bombers rolled onward, although they were more scattered than ever. Johann's flying was much more controlled this time as he headed towards the lead bomber. Adamit went after Kremler and Dahl's previous target. Adamit bore down and his aim was true. He landed his bullets on the bomber's wing and did some damage this time. He was concentrating so hard that he didn't realize how close he had come to the bomber itself and was forced to take some evasive maneuvers to break away. Johan scored a hit on his bomber's fuselage, but the giant bird remained aloft. What do you have to do to knock these things down? Johan yelled in exasperation. He peeled away to his left, leaving the bombers behind him. He circled a bit, but he just didn't have enough fuel to go chasing after them at this point. Captain, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. I had to do some fancy flying back there, but I'm too out of position now to catch the bombers. I'm headed home. Yes, me too. Johann circled for a minute and looked back at the desperate, violent chaos that he had just been a part of. The bombs were dropping towards the target, the anti-aircraft fire peppering the bright summer day with black smoke. As their fuel gauges got dangerously close to empty, Johann could see the flak was beginning to take its toll. In fact, the lead bomber had fallen out of formation. He lost sight of it shortly after that and wasn't sure if it had been shot down or not. Then, he noticed some of the ominous black puffs right near his plane. Those idiots! He exclaimed as he broke away. What are they doing? There was an explosion just off his wing. That was the only encouragement he needed. He banked hard and dove to get some extra speed and exited the area. Dahl, meanwhile, was experiencing a severe case of deja vu. His engine had quit, he was attempting to glide back to base or at least as far as he could get. But this time, something was different. Not only was there the relentless flak, now apparently aimless and random, that plagued him, but this time, he just didn't have the speed, and the elevators on his plane were too damaged. I guess I'll have to bail out, he thought. He pulled the lever to release the canopy, but nothing happened. Now this has to be a joke, he yelled. He strained against the canopy and hammered at it with his fists, but to no avail. He turned around, his mind racing. The propeller spun uselessly in the wind. His speed was dropping, as was the nose of his plane. Well, I guess this time the joke's on me, he mused. Adamit weaved his way through the air, leaving the black puffs of smoke, the bullets and the bombers behind him. He checked again to confirm that Johan was off his port wing. He hadn't heard from Dahl in a while, but Adamit figured he had landed in one of the fields below and left his plane to bother one of the local farmer's daughters with his jokes. Away from all the action, it was actually a lovely day to be in the air. The sun and clouds made it ideal flying weather, and he banked back and forth, feeling the singular joy of a pilot in flight. As he approached the airfield and deployed his landing gear, he lazily drifted down until his wheels touched the ground. He'd made it back again today, and his staffel was safe. That's all that mattered. <laughs>